got here, the long version, is a longer story than I want to tell. How I got here, the short version, is the story of a night a year and a half ago. I was with Aaron, who was supposed to be the love of my life. Did I win, baby? I sang out to Aaron across Raji's bar, pretending I was more stupid than I actually was. We had landed in L.A. six months before, and that was when I really started laying on the dumb routine. I found it advantageous to be underestimated. You have to be careful how you fake it, though, because things like that can stick, and before you know it, you become what you're pretending to be. Not that I'm some kind of genius, but I'm not dull enough to think I lost, even when the other guy sank the eight ball. But I hollered at Aaron anyway, because he was deep in red, bar-light, sparkle-eyed conversation with a smart, dainty blonde named Madison, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Madison. Madison, from USC Film School, no doubt. It was a bad night already, bad even before it got worse. I was pitched sideways with the cheap well liquor and the dope we'd smoked off foils in the bathroom and the lines we'd snorted off Madison's compact mirror. I had smoked cigarettes dusted with cocaine and was tumbling too fast. I flirted with Aaron's friends just to piss him off. Hey, Chaz. I baited my hook and let my line fly. Chaz was such a ridiculous mark with his wire-rimmed glasses and his oversized sweater-wearing women's college-going girlfriend. I like to taunt people like Chaz because really, what other power do I have? I have the power to make him think of me when he's fucking his girlfriend. Chaz has all the rest. Chaz will graduate from law school and make lots of money, and the most I can hope for is that he'll still vote liberal so that when things get too bad, people like me can get a bed at a state-sponsored rehab. My mom used to say to me, pretty is as pretty does. She's like the fucking cliche almanac, my mom. But she was pretty too. Prettier than me, even, because she wasn't as tall and broad in the shoulders as I am. I watched her and decided that it wasn't true. Pretty isn't what pretty does. Pretty just is. Pretty is pretty, and it can get you a few things, and it doesn't last long, so whatever the hell you can do with it while you have it, just go ahead and do it. So that's all I was doing, just trying to use what I had to wring the last electrical charge out of a night that was fast slipping through my fingers while Aaron turned his face away. When I remember it now, I can almost see the red lights glowing in my eyes, the flecks of foam at the corners of my mouth, some animatronic, horrible girlfriend monster. I hopped up and sat on the edge of the pool table. I swung my legs and pouted. Be my savior, Chaz. No one else is volunteering. Tell me, did I win? I let it run right off the rails, let it get all out of hand. My love for Aaron was so acid, it scraped my veins raw. He twinkled his liquid chocolate eyes at some other bitch, waiting a beat before he turned to me after I called out to him. And I loved him so hard right then that I wanted him dead, is the truth of it. <laughs> I could always see Aaron's head over the others in the bar. He was an explosion of dreadlocks and gangly limbs. He had an enigmatic, not white, not black thing going on that inspired strangers to constantly ask him, what are you? Which bugged him. <laughs> to no end. I mean, what kind of question is that? He would simply answer, I'm Aaron. He was nobody's easy anything. Thick, black-rimmed eyeglasses cemented his face in place, but otherwise, he was constant motion. Constant, easy, seamless motion. And me? I was a long redhead, glowing next to him, like some Irish peasant from an old painting. What I thought when he stood behind me, with his arms clasped around my waist in front of the full-length mirror, was that I was something more glorious than I had ever been before. Someone I didn't recognize. Aaron did love me, but not, I think, like I loved him. 
not so that it twisted him ugly and desperate. Shook Me All Night Long came on the jukebox, and it is a universal law that all strippers must dance whenever that song comes on, no matter where they are. And that's what I was by then, an exotic dancer out at Jet Strip by the airport. I had meant it to be an emergency measure, something to get us by until Aaron could score another gig. When I met him, Aaron was playing the horn on tour with Billy Coyote, a pretty well-known jazz guitarist. One humid Thursday in July, he had walked into Rusty's, where I worked in Toledo. My real pop was a horn player, too. There's a lot I can't remember about him, but I remember hearing him play. I live my life now with two trumpet songs, like sad angel voices in my head, Aaron's and my pop's. Sometimes I can't remember anymore whose horn was whose, except that Aaron had a flaw that Billy berated him mercilessly for. He could be tentative with how he finished a phrase. Sometimes, when Aaron took the horn from his lips, you have the sense of another note hovering somewhere in a parallel universe, a note he could have chosen but didn't. Not so with my pop. He always hurled himself at the finish line. When I first started working at Rusty's, Rusty had called me into the back office and showed me old pictures she kept of my pop. He was tall like me, taller than the other guys on the cramped stage. In my favorite picture, my pop is blowing his heart out in the smoke haze blue spotlight, wide colored suit, a lock of greased hair falling in his face, forehead glistening with sweat, eyes closed. I wondered where in the Toledo I knew was anyone half as cool. If I met someone as cool as that, I vowed I would follow him wherever he went. And then in walked Aaron. When Aaron's band left Toledo the next morning, that was exactly what I did. I climbed into the bus with them. And when I say that pretty can get you a thing or two, that's what I mean. I mean, it can get you a bus ride to the West Coast with a jazz musician who hardly knows you, but might already be suspecting that he loves you. By that night at Raji's, a year and some change ago, dancing had shifted from an emergency measure to just being my deal. It was what I did, and I couldn't remember anymore what I had started out wanting to do. Had I wanted to be a singer, a jazz wife? A California bohemian? I don't think I wanted to be a drunken stripper. <laughs> Not that it was so bad, but it wasn't so good. I mean, what it does to how you look at your real boyfriend. How all that lying all night long and all the laughs of all the men can make you kind of angry. And how being angry and smiling is a bad habit to get into. You can blow up and do something cruel one night. You can do something stupid that maybe you'll regret forever and that will ruin the rest of your whole life. Thank you. <laughs>